This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on 39 Dunedin News, members of a local child poverty group express concern over the welfare package announced in yesterday's budget. We'll find out why it's not just students who are expected to benefit from a newly announced engineering program. And the Hubble Cupcake is being used to raise funds and awareness of a destructive disorder. Good evening, Danita. I'm Rebecca Dupree. There is concern the government's latest budget does little to address the nation's poorest citizens. That's the message from members of a local child poverty group. They've gathered to discuss the latest welfare package and say the government needs to do more. Teasing out the issues, members of the public and a panel of experts have been discussing the impact of the government's latest budget. The yearly brunch event by the Child Poverty Action Group is aiming to provide a community forum for political analysis. So looking at what the budget might provide in terms of addressing both the causes and consequences of child poverty with specific interest in the areas of incomes and housing and also health and education. So Child Poverty Action Group um, do a bit of an, an analysis of those areas. Cadell says the idea behind staging the panel discussion was to give interested members of the public a range of perspectives about the budget in one place. Local speakers at the brunch event included Invercargill Mayor Tim Shadbolt, speaking alongside members of recently formed student group Choose Kids. We worked really hard to get the student voice involved just because I think it's easy to talk at an audience, whether it's students or anyone, and not really get a sense of if they are understanding it or what their view of it is or what their response is. So, yeah, we. we decided we'd go with the student panel this year to get that student um, perspective. Finance Minister Bill English's latest budget contains a more than $600 million social investment package. That includes almost $350 million over the next four years for the care of vulnerable children and young people. But those gathered locally say it doesn't go far enough in tackling the issues of child poverty, with many saying housing is the real concern for poorer families. Stigmatising rules around who can and can't get a state house at the moment just contributes to um, lack of housing in those high cost cities. And of course income, you know, the major cause of poverty is lack of income and we've had nothing in this budget to address that. So I can't see any um, real reduction of the numbers of children living in poverty in the next year. Cadell says it's heartening to see so many people taking an interest in the issue of child poverty. She admits there's no quick fix to many of the outlined issues, but says it's important that advocacy groups keep the conversation going. Ruby McAndrew, 39, Dunedin News. Authorities are making no apology for shutting down part of an inner city bar after it was found to be grossly overcrowded at the weekend. Suburbia has had its liquor licence suspended by the Dunedin District Licensing Committee. It follows a request from local firefighters who were called to the nightclub early Sunday morning to find around 300 people at the premises. That's almost double the bar's capacity of 160. The suspension has reportedly come as a shock to the club owner, who's claiming 100 of those people were outside the facility when the fire service attended. The matter may be subject to a hearing. The city's links to China are being further strengthened thanks to the introduction of a new joint study program. Otago Polytechnic is teaming up with a Chinese university to offer a degree program in engineering. But it's not just prospective students who are set to benefit. Looking over international offerings, Otago Polytechnic staff are getting an insight into a new degree program that will see the institution's partnership with the Chinese university strengthened. The collaboration between ourselves and Dalian Ocean University is around the uh, Bachelor of um, Engineering and that program has been run in New Zealand now for a number of years and uh, we have uh, got a partnership with Dalian Ocean University and it's called a 3 plus 1. Three years of the four year degree will be completed in China before the students travel to Dunedin to complete the final year at Otago Polytechnic. The program will see around 120 Chinese students descend on the city annually and local polytechnic staff are also set to travel as part of the initiative. 
Our um, responsibility will be to um, send out some of our teaching staff to China and they will be involved in the first three years of the program in China and at that point all the students that want to complete the degree, the Bachelor of um, Engineering Technology, will come to Dunedin. A Dunedin delegation will travel to China next month to further strengthen ties and look at economic opportunities. As part of the tour, Mayor Dave Carl will witness the launch of the new engineering program in Dalian. Polytechnic staff say the course is just one of several ways Dunedin is building a stronger relationship with China. It's for our students to have a cultural context to um, their studies and how they can learn from um, the Chinese students when they come out to New Zealand. Um, also for our staff going to China, so our staff will teach in China but in English, so there's a cross-cultural experience there and it will benefit both our, our cities as well. The program officially launches at the beginning of June with the first 60 students due to start the course come September. Annabelle Dick, 39, Dunedin News. Drugs with a street value of around $20,000 have been intercepted en route to Dunedin. Customs officials found 56 grams of MDMA, also known as ecstasy, in a package destined for the city. Police have arrested a 21-year-old man in relation to the discovery. They've also apprehended a 22-year-old man in Omaru where about 300 grams of methamphetamine was intercepted. That's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Police say the drugs were sourced from China over the internet. Staff at the local branch of the National Multiple Sclerosis Society are rallying community support with baked goods. They're raising awareness and funds to help people with a condition by baking and selling cupcakes as part of an international fundraiser. And they hope their efforts will contribute to combating the destructive disorder. Kissing away multiple sclerosis. These locals are campaigning to help people with the condition. They're enjoying cupcakes at the National Society's local branch to raise awareness and funding. Today is our Kiss Goodbye to MS campaign. It's actually an international campaign. This is the first year that we've been part of it um, to raise that awareness about MS and also raising funds for medical research. As staff at the Otago Multiple Sclerosis Society put on a brunch and baked more than 600 cupcakes for sale. These boxes were snapped up early by residents, raising $1,000 for the cause. MS sufferers say it's important to spread word about the disorder with it becoming more prevalent in society. I don't think people really understand what it's like to have MS and how devastating it can affect the person as well as all the family and supporters. So um, it's just making people aware. The local society supports about 300 sufferers but believes there are others locally who haven't come forward for help. Staff say events like this enable the diagnosed to meet fellow MS patients within the community. Almost 3,000 people nationwide have the central nervous system disorder. Lots of bonds have, are made and they're just so resilient. All the people are just, they don't let it get to them and they're just so happy and really enjoy life and you know make the most of it. And I think that's what part of the society is helping with that as well. This is the first year the local branch has been involved with the global fundraising campaign and staff plan on continuing it so they can support progress to find a cure. Annabelle Dick, 39, Dunedin News. Still to come on 39 Dunedin News, we meet a young woman who's just returned from the Cannes Film Festival and international cricket is coming to Dunedin. Details soon. Hi, this time of year we like to keep our customers warm and comfortable and we sell a lot of moleskins and we've got them all on special. Check out these, tussock cream, two weights and they're a great price. We also sell Lee Stretch moleskins, five different colours, short and regular, great buy, moleskins, Alex Campbell means we're three stores. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region, Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. We're a 25 Moreau place at Dogwood Towers Cafe and Bar. So we take coffee very seriously. We do what's called contract roasting, so we're creating our own roasting profile and then doing our own blends. We're, we're really focused on the craft of what we're doing. You know, we're going back, instead of going on mass-produced sort of cheap things, we're taking the time to really craft what we're making. Make it so anyone can come here and have a, have a feed um, and be able to get something they're able to eat or that they, that they want to eat as well. You're kind of getting a taste of cafes from all around the world when you come here. 
fun, come all to the Lana Castle Winter Ball. Traditional dancing, dining and fun to be had. Dress up in your Victorian costume and experience the glamour of yesteryear and witness the address of the haggis. Friday 22nd of July, get in fast as tickets are limited. Call 4761616 or go online to www.lanarkcastle.co.nz. New Zealand Beeswax Limited are the quintessential beeswax, woodware and beekeeping suppliers. From the amateur beekeeper to the commercial operator, New Zealand Beeswax Limited has the quantity to meet your needs. For great prices, great service New Zealand wide, contact New Zealand Beeswax Limited on 03 693 9189 or visit www.beeswax.co.nz. Again, the Star Regent 24 hour book sale starts noon 10th of June. Don't miss out! It's Junk Free June. I'm giving up chocolate. Go to junkfreejune.org.nz today and get started. Omaru's Fire and Steam is a unique family event coinciding with the Steampunk New Zealand Festival. Fire and Steam is being held Friday the 3rd of June from 6 30 pm to 9 pm. The festival is to celebrate fire, steam, sound, light and music. Harbour Street will come alive. An annual event not to be missed. professional, reliable and approachable service where your dream kitchen design can become an affordable reality, contact the team at Kitchens for Less. Call 455-9973 or visit us online. Dog with Two Tails Cafe and Bar on Moray Place. Proud supporters of New Zealand Music Month, May 2016. Welcome back. The country's fruit exports are propping up the economy while dairy values continue to fall. Overall goods exports rose 4% last month, up $166 million. Fruit led the increase, scanning 16% to push total goods exports for April to $4.3 billion. The gold, kiwi fruit and apple sectors are faring particularly well, with growing demand from Asian markets like Taiwan. Meanwhile, the milk, powder, butter and cheese commodity group is down 6.7%. And on that note, let's take a look at today's financials. The NZX50 has closed the day up 45 points. It's now at 6,993. The Nikkei is up 49 points. And to the exchange rates, and the Kiwi dollar closes the week up against all the currencies we follow. A young Dunedin filmmaker has just returned from one of the world's most prestigious festivals. 39 Dunedin News reporter Annabelle Dick recently attended the Cannes Film Festival in France where her eight minute documentary screened and she joins us to talk about it. Good evening. Hi. Tell us about this, this eight minute documentary that you produced. Um, so The Grind is a film I made while at broadcasting school last year. Um, we had um, a part of an assignment to make an eight minute short documentary of our choosing and so uh, my a partner and I we um, ended up focusing on um, Grinder, which is a day gaming app for men. So from there we um, interviewed about 10 or so gay men within Christchurch that were on the app scene and basically share their experiences with, with the dating app. Mm. Why did you pick this particular topic? Right, so um, my documentary partner and I, we were just talking about our personal experiences through dating apps and he happened to meet his boyfriend through Grindr and initially we wanted to do something like Tinder vs Grindr but uh, we had to kind of refine it down and so we decided to focus on Grindr as it is a sector of society that a lot of people don't kind of know about so we wanted to shed some light on it. Now the documentary has screened at Cannes, in what capacity? Right, so we were part of the short film corner and there there's hundreds of other films from around the world that were being showcased. So um, there um, people who were a part of the festival could choose to go 
and um, watch it. And we could also choose to have our own screening if we wanted to, but that meant rallying together distributors and producers or people within the film industry to get an audience. But we kind of had other goals at the festival, so we didn't get, get that far, but we did get people watching it. Did you get any feedback on your film? Yep, uh, well we met a lot of other Kiwi filmmakers there and um, we shared our films amongst each other and we did get a lot of really good feedback from them, what we can do um, in the future and good points about it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it was good stuff um, basically and it's good to kind of yeah, get feedback from other people who are also within the industry. Mm. And your film's been picked up already? Yes, yep. So we've had an offer um, from a distributor, um, Lightbox, um, within New Zealand. They have bought the film for three years. So um, we can keep continue to sell it around the world to anyone else who we want to kind of put it out to. But within New Zealand, it's strictly um, they can only show it. So it's pretty exciting for us to have someone pick it up and make... Well, it's not about making the money, but just to kind of have people um, that are interested in our film that they would choose to purchase mm. it, so we're very honoured. Did you get to meet any big names in the industry while you were in Cannes? Um, no, unfortunately. I was, there were so many of them there, but I feel like maybe I was on the other side of Cannes. But um, <laughs> they kind of, I guess, they kept to themselves to a degree or spent a lot of the time on the red carpet or in the fancy yachts. But um, there were so many big names floating about and people that weren't perhaps uh, Hollywood movie stars, big producers and directors. There were, so, oh, I did see some Kiwi, Kiwi um, directors floating around, so that was pretty um, awesome to see mm. them over that side of the world. Has your experience at Ka in Cannes prompted you to continue with the filmmaking road? Yes, yes, it, it was very inspirational being able to watch other films from around the world, other shorts, and kind of get an idea on what I, um, other techniques and things that I, I, I really I've, I've learned from. So moving forward, um, yeah, what I could kind of utilise, I guess. I mean, it's given me a whole heap of ideas yeah. in my head. And something awesome to look on the on the CV, and not everybody get, gets to take a film to Cannes. Yeah, yeah, it's great to chuck that in there. I guess employers would like, like that. It, it, like you said, it's not something you get to do all the time, so mm. it was an amazing opportunity mm. for me to go to something that will, might be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Hopefully not, hopefully I get to go back, but mm. yeah, that's what I think. Filmmaker and 39 Dunedin News reporter Annabelle Dick, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Rebecca. After the break on 39 Dunedin News, cricket fans are in for a real treat and we'll take a look at the results of this week's online poll. Sir Bob Charles, New Zealand's greatest golfer and still going strong. I'm sure that Sportsville was a contributing factor to my success and I'll continue to use it. Sir Bob Charles Sportsville, a product so good he puts his name to it. Well, I believe Sportsville helps maintain your quality of life. Now being used by active men and women globally to support strength and mobility. Works for me. Sir Bob Charles Sportsville in the new All Black Pack. Call now for the Sportsville special 0800 502 402. Dog with Two Tails Cafe and Bar on Moray Place. Proud supporters of New Zealand Music Month, May 2016. We like to keep our customers warm and comfortable and we sell a lot of moleskins and we've got them all on special. Check out these, tussock cream, two weights and they're a great price. We also sell Lee stretch moleskins, five different colours, short and regular, great buy, moleskins, Alex Campbell means we're three stores. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region, Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. your grass seed just won't grow. Ready Lawn has the perfect solution for all those lawn woes. Call Ready Lawn today on 486 1819. It has no arms, no legs, has a drill in its mouth up to eight hours a day and still 
never complains. It's one of 72 mannequin torsos in our new $3.8 million dental simulation lab. The first and only facility of its kind in New Zealand. My name is Nikki Rose Cotolaro and this is my place in the world. Take your place in the world. Junk Free June is about making a change that makes you healthier and happier. Kick the junk or that bad habit during June and you'll be helping yourself and supporting the Cancer Society. Get others to support you and get rewarded with discounts on some great products and services too. Go to junkfreejune.org.nz today and get started. You'll be doing good for you and for local people affected by cancer. Come one, come all to the Lana Castle Winter Ball. Traditional dancing, dining and fun to be had. Dress up in your Victorian costume and experience the glamour of yesteryear and witness the address of the Haggis. Friday 22nd of July, get in fast as tickets are limited. Call 4761616 or go online to www.lanarkcastle.co.nz. We're a 25 Moro place at Dog with Tails Cafe and Bar. So we take coffee very seriously. We do what's called contract roasting, so we're creating our own roasting profile and then doing our own blends. We're, we're really focused on the craft of what we're doing. You know, we're going back, instead of going on mass-produced sort of cheap things, we're taking the time to really craft what we're making. Make it so anyone can come here and have a, have a feed um, and be able to get something they're able to eat or that they, that they want to eat as well. You're kind of getting a taste of cafes from all around the world when you come here. Tune in on Thursday for Motorsport Night on Dunedin Television. Welcome back. Thousands of dollars worth of gear has been stolen from inside a shipping container situated near Allenton. Police say the semi-rural site on McLaren Gully Road was entered overnight on Tuesday sometime after 5pm. A vice, a chainsaw and several rattle guns were taken as well as an unspecified amount of fuel. A fire extinguisher was also stolen, along with what police describe as chain-making gear. Dunedin cricket fans have reason to celebrate with the city hosting three top international matches in the next couple of seasons. New Zealand Cricket announced the ANZ International Series, comprising 98 days of competition involving the Black Caps. The opening test against South Africa will be played at University Oval in March next year. The local venue will also host one, two one-day internationals against Pakistan and England. They're scheduled for January and March 2018. The city's allocation is tied in with a new business model for hosting matches involving Dunedin Venues Management, the Dunedin City Council and the Otago Cricket Association. A renewable energy trust is seeking resource consent to install three wind turbines on Porteous Hill near Waitati. The proposal is attracting support and opposition from community members. This week's 39 Dunedin News online poll asked if you would like to see wind farm development in Dunedin. And quite the majority of you do. 84% are for, 16% aren't so keen. The national-led government has just released details of its eighth annual budget for the coming financial year. It's giving the Southern District Health Board a record amount of funding, totalling $884 million. Next week's 39 Dunedin News on poll, uh, online poll asks if you care about the budget. You can vote at our website, dunedintv.co.nz. And now recapping tonight's top stories on 39 Dunedin News. The Child Poverty Action Group says the government's latest budget does little to address problems for the nation's most vulnerable. More local links with China are being formed with an upcoming mayoral delegation and a new program offered by Otago Polytechnic. And the Otago Multiple Sclerosis Society is selling cupcakes to raise money and awareness for supporting residents with the disorder. Well, it's time now to find out what's going to be in the weekend edition of the ODT. And you might be reading it all weekend due to the horrible weather that's coming. Barry Stewart's with us to tell us about it. Hello, Rebecca. I was going to use that line, actually. Oh, sorry. Good weekend to read the newspaper. Absolutely. Back and back to back, over again. Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, it'll take you all weekend to read it anyway. That's true. Um, Dunedin's dire housing situation is forcing at-risk youth to engage in prostitution and to sleep rough in cars, oh, according dear. to a report. So that's not a... A great story, is it? I was mm. going to go on about the uh, 
DVML and uh, so cricket at University Over. You've covered that pretty thoroughly. But we pipped you um, at the pipes. You did, scooped. Yeah. Um, but that's uh, a good news story for Dunedin. Mm. Um, and uh, the events that DVML have got around that sound pretty exciting. So uh, could be a good festival atmosphere at the cricket in the sun in March. So that's, uh, that's good. Mm. Target Museum has been granted 500000 to uh, kickstart its uh, new Discovery World 2. Cool. They already have Discovery World 1. <laughs> so uh, uh, more expansion at the, at, the, uh, at the museum. Heavy snow predicted to 700 metres. Mm. Thereabouts. Thereabouts. Could be, could be five, who knows. <laughs> um, and uh, of course we have a strong lineup of reads in the weekend mix, so that'll um, ease the pain. Absolutely, that's tomorrow's ODT and Sunday's as well. And of course the Highlanders match tonight, we'll have the result of that. Cool, that's, thank you Barry. Thank you. <laughs> it's time now for local weather. This 39 Dunedin News weather update proudly brought to you in association with Silverhorns Emu Oil. Here is our city view, it's taken of the stadium and the harbour. Around the city at 3 o'clock today, 10 degrees in the central city, 12 for both the gardens and the tyree. To the situation, a depression will move across central New Zealand tomorrow. It's going to bring unsettled weather, cold southerlies will return on Sunday. So to the forecast for the main towns in the lower south for tomorrow, south easters with some cloud for Invercargill, Gore and Tianau. South easters also in Alexandra with some rain with a high of 8. South Easters and some rain in Queenstown and Wanaka. Southerlies for Omaru, rain there as well though. And snow showers in Twizel with South Easters and just 6 degrees. Brr. In Dunedin tonight, cloudy with an overnight low of 5. Uh, tomorrow, still cloudy with periods of rain. Snow to 500, maybe 700. Gusty South Easters and a high of just 8. Not good. On Sunday, similar weather but rain easing during the day with 7 degrees. So washing day is a bit of a write-off. All good for me, I did mine today. Finally to the Otago Pallet Fires, tidal and fishing information. And high tide tomorrow morning is at 7.30. Low tide on Sunday afternoon is at a quarter past three. And fishing conditions are pretty good this weekend, especially around five o'clock tomorrow evening and a quarter to six Sunday evening. And that is all from the team here at 39 Danita News for this week. We're going to leave you now with some shots from the week that was. We'll see you again on Monday. Stay warm and dry. Good night. This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. 
Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.